What up? It's your boy T Bear here on the reaction. Today is Phones Friday. Now it's time for the meat and potato of Phones Friday. That is the dead meat kill counts. Now, before anybody asks or anything, hope y'all pay attention when I said in the community. I did pull a poll up for the Mex react Mex kill count I'm doing after the one I have already planned. Because I hadn't already planned, but folks was pushing me to do the the golden chainsaw and the old machete uh year four year four supercuts so i had to get that out the way and so now we want to get into the kill count i intentionally do last week and that is as one that I already kind of did via jeff it it was a jeff or carnage count one or two but you know how i feel about james h and these way of doing kill counts so i don't mind doing redo redoing it for sake of seeing how his perspective of it that is the one only 13 ghosts so without further ado let's check it out welcome to the kill count where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies i'm james h and east and today we're looking at 13 ghosts which is often mm -hmm. written in lead speak this very 2001 horror movie is something of a cult favorite, and it's been getting renewed attention lately. Though, I promise it was already on the Kill Count calendar before my buddy Foundflix released his video about it. Oh. I always mentally group this movie with contemporary supernatural fare like The Haunting and House on Haunted Hill, the latter made by the same production company, okay. Dark Castle Entertainment. As the name implies, Dark Castle was originally formed to remake William Castle movies. 13 okay. Ghosts is a remake of Castle's 1960 mm -hmm. film, and if you've listened to our podcast episode about horror gimmicks, it wouldn't surprise you to learn that the original 13 Ghosts was released with enhanced marketing. Illusional! Ooh. A pair of colored cellophane glasses that, when worn by an audience member, would reveal the ghosts in the mm -hmm. film. The 13 Ghosts remake similarly relies on smoke and mirrors to entertain the audience, but instead of viewing gimmicks, it covers up its weaknesses with a flashy style and great mm -hmm. production design. Most of the film takes place inside a giant glass house contraption that is visually striking and impressively designed. The same compliments can be paid to the 12 ghosts trapped inside of it, who can only be seen by the other characters when they're wearing special glasses. A nod to Bill Castle's illusion -o. Unfortunately, the ghosts in the glass house are just about all 13 ghosts has going for it. An argument could be made for its cast of familiar and charming faces. I'm always a fan of Matthew Lillard yep. chewing up scenery. But when it comes to the story, it's an indecipherable mess. A Byzantine tangle of spiritual spell requirements and demonic possessed astronomers trapping ghosts to predict the future. This nonsense is dumped into our laps in a couple of repetitive exposition heavy scenes, and in between those, we're treated to endless minutes of the characters splitting up, getting mm -hmm. lost, and sometimes flat out disappearing. I loved this movie as a kid, and it certainly has its charms, but nostalgia can't cover up its many noticeable flaws. Also, anyone who gets annoyed by flashy editing is gonna have a bad time. In fact, people who are photosensitive might want to skip this one altogether. Mm. The flashes just happen too often often for me to put a warning every time. The movie does have at least one amazing kill in it, and because I have to show it to you, this episode is sponsored. You may not be able to buy glasses that let you see ghosts, but you can buy earbuds that let you hear high quality sound. Raybuds. Raycon earbuds Raycons. deliver premium sound in a compact design, with no dangling stems that a killer ghost could grab you by. They're so damn comfy, Chelsea sometimes sleeps with them in, listens to German, she's brushing up on it. I okay. use them while working out on my brand new muscle machine because okay. I know they won't fall out no matter how active I'm being. To enjoy their noise isolating sound, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and six hours of playtime, go to buyraycon.com slash dead meat and get 15% off your Raycon purchase. If you don't love them, return them for free in 45 days. That's buyraycon.com slash dead meat, the link's in the description, for 15% off your order today. I know the movie's called 13 Ghosts, but this ain't the ghost count. Let's get to counting the kills. 
The movie begins with a big old truck smashing its way into a junkyard. This crew of dudes in reflective safety ponchos works for ghost hunter Cyrus Criticos, played by F. Murray Abraham, lending this movie an enormous amount of credibility. That's Salieri, dude! His lackey Dennis Rafkin, played by Matthew the Little mm -hmm. Woozy Feeler Lillard, Woozy. is a psychic who can sense ghosts. In this junkyard, he feels the presence of one so pissed and murderous, it's trying to crush them with old cars. That oh. kind of shit better come with hazard pay. This one isn't like the others. Then I'll give you a bonus. You don't have that kind of money. After tonight, you'll be surprised. Now get to work. Dennis Ooh. is helping Cyrus capture his 12th ghost, a practice that wins them protest from this dude Damon and his wife, I think, Kalina. These oh. aren't animals you're capturing. They're human beings. They are dead human beings. Maybe you should join Greenpeace. Throw blood on old women's furs. Kalina is played by M. Beth Davids, last seen on the kill count in Army of Darkness, Darkness, which should get a cut comparison sometime this year. Kalina and Damon mention a secret plan Cyrus has involving spells and a 13th ghost. But before Dennis can get any elucidation, Cyrus orders the bait brought in. A truck full of blood? Ugh. You gotta be shit me. Nah, man, they're chumming that junkyard. Thanks to that blood and some creepy Latin spells, Cyrus summons the junkyard spirit, who makes a first-person entrance to kick off our kill count. The first two kills I count here are dead bodies that might have had their kills edited out. We see a corpse hanging from a stack of cars Ooh. that just falls onto some body pieces, which I thought at first could have come from the chumming truck, but both these victims have those ponchos on, so mm. they must have been some of Cyrus's dudes. The next three kills are much more clear. One guy dies with a windshield blood splat, Ooh. another with a very well done backwards body uh. snap. And after Dennis sees the ghost by wearing ghost vision glasses, it kills a third guy by cutting him in half oh, with a car. Shit. The other ghost hunters run, occasionally tossed aside in non-lethal ways, until one unfortunate dude gets trapped as the ghost cube closes with him and the spirit inside. The big boy ghost, mm. his name is the Juggernaut, kills the nameless guy by breaking Damn. Body against the ghost cell walls. Dennis survives the harrowing attack, but he finds Kalina next to a mortally wounded Damon who bleeds out to death on the ground. Dennis then finds he may have a problem collecting his paycheck when he sees Cyrus similarly situated. Ooh. An efficient opening credit sequence introduces Cyrus's nephew, Arthur Criticos, played by Tony Shalhoub one year before Monk premiered. During the circular slow pan, Arthur's wife Jean perishes in a house fire off screen. It's Whoa. done in voiceover dialogue that sounds Sounds like a radio show reenactment. Gee! go outside! We're way outside now! Gee! Can't go back in there, sir. But I'll count it because we did kind of meet her before she died. And also, she'll be important later on. Spoiler alert. A year later, Jean's family struggles in her absence. They're plagued by money problems, though they still employ Nanny Maggie, played by rapper Ra Digga. Mm -hmm. Not sure how much help Maggie is when older sister Kathy is left cooking for herself and her brother Bobby, who's obsessed with true crime. Bobby's an annoyingly precocious little kid who I kind of hate, even mm -hmm. if he does defend my livelihood. Dad, will you tell Kathy? that keeping a record of death is healthy? It's into this maelstrom of stress and strife mm -hmm. that a smarmy suited man interjects himself. This is Ben Moss, a lawyer representing Cyrus's estate. He tells Arthur his late uncle left a video message for him, one that looks like he's about to start begging for red or blue pages. Instead, he tells his nephew that he's inherited his home. And you don't even need to give that Zillow presentation, dog. Arthur and his family are in. Close that window. Oh, wait, it's back. Perhaps we'll meet again. And another life. Brother, the family follows Ben Moss mm -hmm. far outside the city to the isolated home they've just inherited from Uncle Cyrus. Whoa, Dad, it's beautiful. Yeah, I guess. If you've always wanted to live in an escape room with right. open script all over the windows, speak friend and enter, right? Dennis is here, posing as an electrician trying to fix a local power outage. Arthur agrees to let him in, and when he opens the door, the house seems to come alive, whirling and twirling and illuminating itself inside the glass walls. Guess Uncle Cyrus wasn't too keen on privacy. Or he wanted people to see him naked. Rich old guys be like that sometimes, you know? The doors open and grant them entrance into the see-through home with Latin written everywhere. The valuable artifacts inside might be the answer to Arthur's money problems, but Dennis is gonna have to take care of his bank account himself. That's why he's here, to collect the payment he never got from Cyrus. So while the Criticoses are marveling at the Da Vinci device they now call home, Dennis heads into the basement to find a stash of cash. Downstairs, he only finds psychological 
psychological torment as flashes of ghouls and ghosts rack his mind. Mm. A lot of bad vibes down here, because as the Spectre specs reveal, this basement is a g -g 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 ghost prison! Mm. And the inmates are none too pleased. Completely shook by this poltergeist penitentiary, Dennis tells Arthur who he really is. I used to hunt ghosts with your uncle Cyrus. Goats? Bees? Ghosts! Bees! <laughs> Dennis says Arthur needs to get his family out of this house. And try not to touch him while you do it. That secondhand trauma really stings. Shit like that is why Theo wore gloves. Mm. Too bad Arthur's family is scattered all over this place, right. scooting from here to there and finding rooms to claim as their own. An abandoned dusty bed? Whee! Look out, bed bugs! As Maggie finds a pair of those ghost revealing goggles, Ben Moss dips out from Arthur and puts his own pair on. Oh, shit. Looks like he's familiar with and dismissive of the captive ghosts down here. Mm. Hey. Nice dance. <laughs> oh, jeez, you. What's the matter, honey? Bad representation? He finds a case with his payment for bringing Arthur's family here and inadvertently triggers the house to become more active, Ooh. which includes shuttering its doors and windows to the outside world. This new take on a haunted house, swapping out the classic creaky gothic style for a modern glass construction, is never not awesome to look at. Production designer Sean Hargreaves wanted the house to feel like another character, which is okay. why it was built practically on the Bridge Studios lot in Vancouver. All Over right. three miles of glass panes and nearly five tons of steel were used to build the house, and the ultra-modern glass walls were balanced out by the antique production design that used a lot of clock gears, welded metal, and stained glass. Now, it's one thing to design a set that looks cool because it's all glass, but it's another thing to shoot on it. The unique mm -hmm. set caused a lot of issues while filming. Of course, we could see all the way through the house and all the way to the other side where people were standing around and, you know, having coffee and donuts. And it was also a potential <laughs> safety hazard. Part of the reason there's Latin lettering on the see-through walls was right. to stop the cast and crew from running into them. The biggest issues were glare and reflections. And you'll have a reflection here from something way over here and you, you try to find out what it's from. And, and so we try and have uh, most of the crew wearing dark clothing. To help avoid catching reflections of cameras and crew, the set was lit in a 360-degree manner with lights shining down through the ceilings and up through the glass floors. It was a huge ordeal, but the movie had a fair amount of money behind it, and production designer Sean Hargreaves proved to be exceptional at his job, which is probably why he wound up as the senior concept designer for Infinity War, Endgame, mm, okay. Ragnarok, and the upcoming Halo series. As the house's layout continues to shift around, one of the ghost cells is open, freeing the angry princess, that naked slashed up ghost Ben was just teasing. He tries to backpedal his earlier remarks, but he backpedals his ass right into a door frame and is cut in half when the glass door Ooh. slams shut right through his body. This is one of the most standout kills I ever saw. Yeah, but still, I already saw it, but still. Deaths are as indelibly written in my memory as this dude's frontal plane bifurcation. It's beautiful, really. Arthur and Dennis split up to find Arthur's kids since the house's centrifuge or whatever is revving Jackie, up its gears and Jackie continuing Briggs, to close uh, all the exits. Well, Steve Steve Beck wanted most of this movie to be done practically, there were times when that just wasn't feasible. For shots like the spinning gear thing here, they turned to Michael Fink's team of visual effects artists. They worked their asses off, combining layers of effects, sometimes taking several months to make shots that were only four seconds long. I think their digital work looks great for the time. It's a good use of CG. In a glass bathroom that Kathy's currently obsessed with, we get a very cool shot that goes through the ghost glasses to let the audience oh, see shit. the bloody spiritual world. That's how we wow. see that Cappy's made a princess friend. Cappy's oh. played by Shannon Elizabeth, by the way, last seen on the kill count in Jack, Jack Frost, Frost, made four years earlier. Mm -hmm. Here, she is again given a scene involving a bathtub, though thankfully one with less snowman rape. Cappy yep. splashes her face with the princess's tub water, which is surely a Patreon reward somewhere. The water <laughs> turns to blood and the princess goes to get her, but then Arthur interrupts the scene and says they need to skedaddle. Maggie's here too, but Bobby is not. He ran off from her earlier and is now scooting his poofy head up and down the house. Mm -hmm. When it comes to all these glass hallway scenes, they make me feel like Matthew Lillard looks. It's a total fucking drag to watch the characters constantly looking around and calling out for each other. So many scenes with them <laughs> running around, splitting up, and getting lost. All by his lonesome, Bobby oh, hears some ghastly voices coming from downstairs. They send him mixed messages. I have something for you. Mm -hmm. You'll have lots of fun, Bobby. 
Don't come down, Bobby. And he follows them into the basement, where he runs into a couple of scary ghosts. A screaming dude wrapped in cellophane called the Torso, and another ghost, the Bound Woman, played by Laura Minnell, who was oh. previously on the kill count in Trick or Treat, where a pseudo-vampire left her dead in the street. Bobby then sees a ghost of Christmas past when he witnesses his dead mom, Jean, coming oh. towards him. But before he can ask her for any makeup Christmas gifts, he sees Cyrus Criticos and screams. And good, we're done with the shitty kid character for a while. Seems like more and more of these ghosts are running free, no longer imprisoned by the containment spells written in Latin on the ectobar glass. See, ghosts can't cross those. Ghosts? Yes, ghosts. Ghosts. But Arthur ain't afraid of no ghosts and wants to head into the basement <laughs> to find <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> what did I just say? Did I just say there's a petting zoo downstairs? No. There are ghosts downstairs, Arthur. That line is one of two jokes written by an uncredited James Gunn, who must have wow. been brought in for punch-ups. The actual screenplay was written by Richard DeVideo and Neil Marshall Stevens, the latter of whom has written a lot of full moon features, okay. including three puppet masters. Arthur convinces Dennis to help him out in the basement by promising to pay him a lot of money, 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 money. Once they're down there, guess what? They decide to split up, just oh, like boy. the horror movie characters they are. Dennis <laughs> and Maggie find another one of the ghost cells open, though thankfully not the one containing the hammer. Oh, I hate it when they do that! Dennis shares his glasses so Maggie can finally see the ghost and explains that ghosts mm. are all around them. It's just that most are pretty chill, not all pissed like this handsome mm -hmm. fella. Meanwhile, Kathy takes another pair of glasses and equips them to find the jackal, a super scary ghost! Oh, he shit. drags Kathy down the hallway right in front of Arthur's eyes. Damn, jackal, he's up on her, will ya? Punching her in the head and shit. Arthur and Kathy don't stand a chance against the jackal, so it's a good thing Kalina shows up with a flare. She mm -hmm. fends off the jackal and helps Arthur Arthur drag his daughter safely behind some enchanted glass. If you forgot about Kalina, I don't blame you. Although she had one more standalone scene I didn't include earlier, she's a poorly written character that feels more like a plot device than an actual human being. I'm in the spirit reclamation business. What? I free trapped souls. A shame, because I love me, Miss Honey. Arthur finally puts on some ghost goggles and sees that the ghosts are really real. Feels wow. late in the game for the main character to do this, but whatever, now he knows. Kalina goes on a lengthy exposition rant and explains that this house was built based on plans written by a possessed 15th century astronomer named Basilius. It's basically a giant demon device that's meant to predict the future, and it runs on human souls. That mm. seems like a lot of things, movie. Couldn't edit them down a bit? Not like you have a problem editing down your characters, because Kathy's all of a sudden fucking missing. Like she was there, then they went to close ups right. as Arthur and Kalina looked at that book, and when they cut back to a wide shot, she was gone. Good thing. We had gone nearly five whole minutes without the characters looking for someone. Speaking of which, Dennis and Maggie continue looking for Bobby, but instead run into some ghosts, including the firstborn son, a little boy ghost, who isn't too much of a threat, the torn prince, a baseball bat bashing banshee mm -hmm. who almost gets Dennis, and a pair of ghosts called the dire mother and the great child. The latter, played by C. Ernst Hart, who, funny enough, also played a big baby in Trick or Treat, where he was a victim of the sexy like in Lady Clan. Ah. Eventually, Dennis and Maggie run into Kalina and Arthur, who just barely escapes an attack from the newly freed hammer. Hammer. Kalina leads the ensemble deep into the house's interior, which is explored by the camera in a nicely done, creepy montage with good sound design. Sound like. Sound like Dub Bunny's little creepy ass laugh from AEW. At one point, they get attacked by the Jackal, who turns Arthur's back into a scratching ghost, Ooh. but they're able to escape him and another ghost, the Pilgrimess, the by Pilgrimess. getting to the library and hiding behind their Windex spells. There, Kalina reveals to Arthur that his dead wife Jean is one of this house's captive ghosts, and Dennis helped land her in ghost jail, that bastard. Mm. In another he sucked the shit out of him. Kalina tells Arthur about See, the 12th. This is why I like dead meat. They broke down. Down. Most of the movies that a lot of ones, you know, that's their job to, to go to the kill counts. That mean he breaks on the movie though. In case you watched before or you don't never watch before and get the idea and gist of the movie. Ghosts. His wife Jean is ghost number four, the withered lover, meaning mm. she's stuck existing in the form of annoying flashy jump cuts. I've already mm -hmm. mentioned all 12 ghost names Kalina reads from this book, which places an extra special emphasis on number 11, the jackal, and number 12, the juggernaut. 
While Dovidio and Stevens wrote the screenplay, it was director Steve Beck, whose only other film was Ghost Ship, released the following year, who developed the movie's ghosts, giving each of them individual personalities and backstories. That background information is never fully revealed in the film, but it is included in a 13-minute featurette called Ghost Files, okay. which my buddy John Squires of Bloody Disgusting calls his all-time favorite horror DVD bonus feature. In it, F. Murray Abraham narrates as his character Cyrus and explains mm -hmm. the life and death of each of the spirits he's imprisoned inside his home. Ryan gnawed through his straitjacket until the doctors finally locked his head in a cage. It's very well done and informs their appearance and accessories oh. we see in the film. For instance, the torn prince was a small town baseball player who oh. died in a drag race fire. Oh, to bring shit. the ghosts to life, or, you know what I mean. Beck had artist Derek Thompson create comic book style artwork based on the backstories he wrote. These designs were tweaked constantly, all the way up to the makeup process, which was overseen by Howard Berger of KNB FX. Makeup time varied for each ghost, with some taking as long as five hours to apply. Some of the ghost actors had to wear uncomfortable contact uh... lenses, and actor John DeSantis, who played the juggernaut, said he was unable to see what he was doing half the time. DeSantis's makeup involved a bodysuit to add bulk to his six foot nine, 270 wow. pound frame, and six prosthetic pieces that were assembled on his face. After production wrapped, key makeup artist oh, Charles Burley salvaged all... and repainted the. That's it. Oh yeah, he's been on a lot of stuff. I can't think of what. One thing I think of is a little man. He's on something else. Uh, the the thing with gentlemen, something like that. He's on yeah. And gave them to DeSantis as a gift. I've actually never heard of that happening before. I think it's really cool. Kalina says that for the house to run, it needs the energy of these twelve ghosts, and that after the last one is let out of its jail cell, the demon machine will be in full swing. She tells Arthur the only way to stop it is with the titular thirteenth ghost, which must be a person with a broken heart who willingly sacrifices themselves to the machine. Wow! The 13th ghost was the friends we made all along. Er, no, the 13th Whoa. ghost was Arthur. It was Arthur Whoa. all along. He's gonna have to jump into that demon eye thing to save his kids through the power of love. Love is the most powerful energy, Arthur. And after that, there's dynamite. The second most powerful energy. Mm -hmm. Dennis wants to come up with a plan that doesn't involve sacrifice or dynamite and offers to help Arthur as though they were ex-band members considering yeah. a farewell tour. One last time, while there's still time, you and me. They take a pane of enchanted glass out into the hallway as a shield, causing another character split as Kalina and Matt Maggie start the dynamite leg of the mission. That takes them to the heart of the house, where Maggie runs into a figure coming towards her with a cane. She screams and Kalina turns on her, knocking her out mm. with the exposition book. Cyrus Criticos is revealed to be alive, not at all a member of the spiritual world. Wow. And I guess Kalina is in love and working with him, making that character even more of a blatant plot device. Yep. Why? Why are you so mad at me? I did everything you asked me to do. Oh man, now she's all whiny. Dennis and Arthur Arthur's glass pane keeps them safe from the minor league ghosts, but there's not room behind it for both of them to hide from the hammer. Dennis decides to be a good guy for once and lets Arthur keep himself safe, right as the machine opens the final ghost cell. And you know who wasn't that one? Oh, it's the Juggernaut, nah, bitch! Oh, the hammer shit. and the Juggernaut, oh, juggernaut start bitch. double teaming Dennis, mm -hmm. beating the ever loving shit out of him with their hammers and mm -hmm. fists. Dennis is killed when the Juggernaut raises him high above his head and breaks his mm -hmm. back against the corner. Oh, I don't I get Cyrus starts playing Latin chants on the speakers, and it recalls each of the ghosts one by one. Must be some sort of summoning spell, because it's summoning them to the circle room where the floor's spinning round and round. Sorry, Arthur. That includes Jean. She'd love to catch up with you right now, but she's got a dip. Cyrus heads out to the ghost party too, but looks like he's going stag. Kalina is left behind to get crushed to death by sliding glass walls. He doesn't need her now that she's fulfilled her purpose for him. Her job was to lie to Arthur about the nature of the 13th ghost. Turns out the 13th ghost isn't a failsafe, it's an ignition key. Cyrus needs Arthur to sacrifice himself to get this demon eye machine running. To encourage him to be a willing sacrifice, he's put his kids in danger, mm. holding them at the center of the world's most dangerous armillary. It's a pretty confusing plot, which is why we hear M. Beth Davids in a voiceover, reiterating everything she said earlier. This house is not a house. It is a machine. 
cheese. It feels like a last minute attempt to clarify all this nonsense. The voiceover also runs through the names of all 12 ghosts again, because this movie knows they're the best part, so might as well keep highlighting them. Arthur deduces that Cyrus isn't a ghost, and since his uncle has put his kids in danger, he goes and gets a good face walloping in. Cyrus gets the upper hand and chides his nephew for being weak, then demands that Arthur sacrifice himself and become the 13th ghost. The machine requires a ghost to be created out of an act of pure love. That's why I chose you, nephew. You and your pathetic family. Maggie suddenly re-enters the movie by messing with Cyrus' sound equipment, quickly and anticlimactically sabotaging his plan. With the spell broken, the 12 ghosts are able to grab their mm. captor and tormentor and kill him by throwing Cyrus into the swinging Damn. rings. Haha, <laughs> yeah! With some encouragement from Ghost Dennis, Arthur saves his kids by jumping through the swinging rings and pressing triangle in time. Then mm -hmm. he just, uh, huddles over them as a malfunctioning of the machine's gears causes a house wide hurricane of glass shards. How the fuck are they surviving this? They're in that hurricane! With the glass walls broken, the ghosts are free to leave, which almost gives this a Fallen Kingdom ending, but with ghosts instead of dinosaurs. The ghost of Jean appears, obviously the blue of this metaphor, and lets her family know she's at peace with a couple of I love you. Not so fun fact I learned during my research, the shot of the ghosts running off to play was part of a day of reshoots that very unfortunately took place on September 11th, 2001. Aww. Not the best day to be stuck in a makeup chair for five hours. The movie ends with the Criticos family hugging and a still living Maggie declaring that she's not about to clean up this mess. Did 13 ghosts give us 13 bodies? Let's find out and get to the numbers. <gasps> Again! <laughs> twelve people died in Thirteen Ghosts, which I oh, guess shit. matches the twelve ghosts imprisoned inside the house. The victims were ten guys and only two ladies, a five to one ratio of dudes, and with a runtime of 91 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 7.58 minutes. I'll give the Golden Chainsaw for coolest kill to Ben Miles. Yep, of course I found out like on the I Golden, said, on the, this kill is an all the uh, and I know I'm not the only one who will never forget it. Dol Machete for lamest kill will be Gene Criticos, mm -hmm. Fridge during the opening credits in an off-screen house fire. And that's it. 13 Ghosts came out in 2001, and a lot of people really like it, so I hope they enjoyed this episode. Until next time, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thank All right, so that's out the way. Now, now, the moment we were, now, uh, I don't really know time soon, but I did, I guess I, as I mentioned, I did pull a poll up on what could be the next kill count for next week or the next time I do a film Friday. It depends on if I'm busy or not, you know. Um, let me get let me get the YouTube up real quick. And so far, leading leading the way is is happy birthday too. Well, seems like her happy birthday to me, which is a newest kill count that's been released. Um, as you know, this week is the uh, recount of the classic not uh, Night of the Living Dead, but look like host could be, but host could be a uh, cash number as well too, as at thirty three percent, and other one seventy percent is this Bay of Blood. Other ones I had up for vote and it was pieces and 12, 12 hour shift with neither one getting selected at the moment, and I'll also play part two, uh, a part two for uh which uh kill. For one series that I'm still trying to do, we'll finish up, and that is the Wrong Turf series, as I stopped at number three. And since I saw some of the kills on the uh, Super Cut as well, too, I'm hesitant wondering that should I just keep going or move on or just move on to the, the uh, Wrong Turf uh, reboot. So that being my majority are saying that I should finish them out. So I will indeed finish them out after I do... So starting with wrong turn for the the next uh kill come after the one I would do involving the uh five selected ones I uh choosing. So other than that, and once that's selected, once I do that one, I will I will put it up and I put the ones that didn't make it in another one in in this place as well too, unless something newer comes up. But um other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe my YouTube channel. It's your boy T Bear signing off. One love.